So thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. Um, today we're, we'll be talking about um, how to plan for your VC chemistry course um, based on the new study design. So today we're joined by two brilliant speakers who are also authors for the new uh, chemistry for VCE series, um, Kate Adrians and Carrie Bloomfield. All right, uh, before we begin, I just wanted to do an acknowledgement of country. Uh, we would like to recognize the diverse traditional lands on which we are each located. We acknowledge the traditional owners of these lands and we pay our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, recognizing the elders past, present and emerging. Uh, with that, I wanted to introduce our speakers for today. So I'll just hand over to them uh, to give a brief introduction. Uh, first, Kate Adrians. Hi, I'm Kate Edgins. I'm the Director of Science at Frankston High School. And sorry, losing my voice a bit. It's been a big couple of days. So you'll have to, it's kind of like 1-800 chemistry today. Um, the, uh, I'm a VCAR assessor, a uh, chemistry lover, wine maker before I was a chemistry teacher. So long time in the industry and in teaching now. Thanks, Kate. Uh, Carrie, if you would like to introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Carrie Bloomfield. Um, I also am a VCAR chemistry assessor and have been teaching BC chemistry for over 10 years. Um, and in a past life, did quite a few things in chemistry from working in zinc smelters and counterterrorism, aquaculture, climate change, travelled down to Antarctica at one point, um, and working in quarantine. So have a very diverse background, I guess flitted all over the place before I got into teaching. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, and just to introduce myself, I'm Alina Lamb and I'm a publisher at Oxford University Press. Um, I don't have much of a teaching background, but I do have a background in science. So um, I prior to this, I did a PhD in pharmaceutical science. So I've made my, my way into publishing now and I'm really enjoying it. All right. Um, so with that, I'll give an overview of today's webinar. Um, first, we'll just spend a bit of time looking at the new study design, specifically um, changes to um, the assessment and how that slots into um, how we will plan for the new study design. Then we'll go into a bit more detail. Um, after that, we'll talk about the new chemistry for VC series and um, all the information you need, including pricing and when to expect things. And finally, we'll wrap up with a Q&A with our authors and presenters today. So um, again, just a reminder, if you have questions um, throughout the webinar, feel free to drop them into the chat and we'll get to them when we reach um, the Q&A session. All right, um, with that, we'll move on to part one which is what are the key points of difference in study design. So we know that um, there are a range of changes to the study design um, for implementation next year, including changes to content, which we'll talk a bit about today and how to map that to your year, um, the cross-study specification, so that emphasis on key science skills, um, the eight mandated um, scientific investigation methodologies, and um, also sustainability concepts, which are become, becoming quite important, um, and also changes to assessment. So I'll just hand over to Carrie now to talk through um, some more specifics about assessment. Oh, uh, before we do that, I just wanted to highlight, um, this is a link to a previous um, webinar that might be a bit handy to look into. Um, so in this webinar, um, we go into a bit more detail about changes to the study design, so that's worth checking out um, as you think about planning for next year. Alrighty, on to you, Carrie. Thank you. Um, so I guess before we kick off and in terms of what we're hoping to look at in terms of year 11, Kate and I just really wanted to emphasise the types of assessments that are available to you in year 11 and how much that kind of get block, gets blocked off in year 12. So of the assessments in units one and two, other than area of study three, these are all of the options, but the ones that have been highlighted in blue are the ones that have quite significant, um, I guess, correlation or connection to the four types that are in year 12. 
So as we go through and we've placed these within like a timeline and a structure of what Kate and I are hoping to do as year 11 teachers next year, um, you can see these ones are coming up quite a bit more, I guess, than the others. That's not to say that we haven't put the others in there, but we really want to make sure that by the time our students get through from year 11 to year 12, that they're not learning how to compare and evaluate and how to collect data and analyze data from scratch just because we haven't touched upon it in year 11. So these for us are priorities um, in terms of our assessments. Um, not to neglect obviously the areas of study three, so unit one and unit two. And you can see in unit one, definitely you get those examples of investigation topics being the endangered elements on the periodic table, um, greener chemistry, so green polymers, and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people practices, which I'm incredibly excited to teach. And you get your PRAC investigation in um, unit two. So definitely that emphasis on polymers and on Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander perspectives. Um, and even if you want to have a little chat to your science departments about how some of those perspectives can be pulled down into year seven to 10 science, it's really beneficial. But you'll also notice that going through in terms of the unit two PRAC investigation, um, if you didn't already know, we have been knocked down to 600 words. So while it's a really, really good thing to bear in mind for year 12, and we have popped that in the study design that 600 words in preparation for year 12, the year 11, the unit two doesn't have that word limit. And so it's a really great opportunity for you as a teacher to skill build your students and to work on how you can start to meet those, I guess, word limits. Um, so just a reminder that the PRAC work in units one and two is not just experiment based. It is field work, simulations, modelling, there's a whole bunch of it. And something that we've been um, quite diligent about putting in the practical section of this textbook is that it's not just in laboratory type of things. There are a range of things from case studies and field work and modelling and different simulations that we love to use as teachers. Um, however, it is changed in the study design that we have a minimum of 10 hours of class time. And if you do have within the study design, um, a minimum of 50 hours that you need to meet in each of your units, a fifth of that time should be going to your practical work. Um, and it does say for area of study three, a minimum of seven hours class time devoted to undertaking the investigation. So again, something to bear in mind as we're going into planning um, and all of these things are at the forefront of our minds and we make sure that we consider them as we're going through and creating a timeline. Cool, thanks so much for that, Carrie. Uh, we're moving into part two now, which is more of a deep dive into how you can plan out your year to help students succeed. So I'll just hand over um, back to you guys to talk through this. Cool, so Carrie and I are gonna talk through you through uh, unit one and unit two, and just two different outlines that you could use. This is the by the book unit plan. So it's by the study design, basically, because the book is written exactly based on the study design. Every dot points a chapter. It's super clear. Um, every area is a, a full chapter and every dot point, sorry, is a sub chapter. So you could just do it in this way, following the book, the area of study, um, starting with elements and periodic table, and I've got a more expanded one in a couple of slides time to show you what practicals you could add into this, um, how you'd break it up, which you'd put in, you know, which weeks. But at the moment, this is just really quick. So chapter two, you do in two weeks, chapter three in three weeks, chapter four, reactions of metal in about one week. Um, and then we've put in a an assessment there. So this, you could do the analysis and evaluation with reference to sustainability and put in a metal recycling type assessment there. Um, then reactions of ionic compounds and separation and identifications of the components and mixtures, three weeks and one week respectively. And there's two different um, SACs, well, sorry, we're not calling them SACs, uh, assessments that you could do for your uh, VC12 students there. Um, then on to unit, uh, sorry, area study two, quantifying atoms and compounds, about three weeks for that. I normally find 
could possibly blow out a little more depending on the amount of practice you do with those calculations, depending on your class, depending on the year. Um, and then a, an analysis and evaluation of primary data, determining the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. Um, then families of organic compounds, my absolute favourite at carbon chemistry is my absolute favourite. Um, three weeks on that, which I think isn't enough. I'd do the whole term if I could. Um, and then from there, polymers and society. But I was thinking I'd teach this uh, within the investigation and have um, my area of study three, the investigation topic, where the students really took this to find out something they found interesting around polymers. So a little bit of teaching, a little bit of investigation in there. So that's unit one, um, about 18 weeks in that kind of area. So then Kerry's going to teach talk you through unit two in the by the book unit plan and then we'll do a little something different. Um, so with regard to the um, the assessments as well, just bear in mind that it is you, you do have to do one assessment for each outcome. Um, and this is just us brainstorming types of things that you could do. But if you are going to in unit one, you cannot do the same assessment across two outcomes. So you can't do two lots of field work and you can't do two modelling activities. You do have to change it up, but you can do the same one again in unit two. So although we definitely would not do all of these, these are just us brainstorming the types of things that we could put and where we would put them. Um, so water is a Thank unique you. chemical. <laughs> water is a unique chemical goes next. Um, and I'm definitely interested in like the Yarra and how you can purify drinking water and what's in the Yarra, especially based on how much stuff they pulled out of it recently. That was quite horrifying. Um, but acid based reactions would go next and take three weeks. So Again, we're emphasising things that we think are really going to correlate to year 12. We're de-emphasising the stuff that maybe isn't as essential, but still quite important. Um, redox reactions with two weeks, and you have the potential to look at galvanic cells in that one if you do want to link up to year 12. And we've got that a little bit later in our um, timeline. Uh, solubility and concentration, always incredibly important to emphasise because it is going to be needed quite a bit from there on in. Um, acid and base two weeks, and this is a really good um, good sort of tie into titration and how you can start to quantitate, sorry, start to analyse different solutions and different materials to determine their qu concentrations quantitatively. Um, gases go next. We love gas laws. Um, and if you're not aware of gas, sorry, we, we, have, we have a deep-seated passion for gas laws. Um, so measuring gases, about three weeks. It is going to be quite an essential topic in year 12 and understanding all the, um, the equations and especially laboratory conditions, standard conditions, really, really important. Um, analysis for salts, just one week. I think that based on the students having done ionic and types of reactions already, it should be a really good sort of consolidation. And then, of course, your practical investigation. If you're doing it in the order that, you know, you're going by the book and by the study design last. However, as teachers, we know that it's a nightmare to do that assessment in the last two weeks of that last little bit as you're doing your reports and things like that. So bear in mind that the next timeline that we're going to look at is more of Kate and I showing you how we would do it um, and, you know, considering all that type of stuff where you really do want to consider your own workload as well. So this is something a little bit different and bear with me. This is possibly how I, that probably it is, it's going to be how I'm going to teach it. Um, Alina just told me that I had to do it in the, the study design order. So you, that, you got that one. Um, and this is, this is honestly how I'd roll with this one. So I do elements in the periodic table, probably a little bit in an early commencement or a little bit of consolidation there. Again, the time amounts, the weeks, they're all the same. Um, but I've just put the chapter in the book there so you can see that I'm flipping about. It's getting a little bit crazy. But elements in the periodic table as a single unit on its own. Then I do reactions and metals ionic compounds, covalent compounds, and the new separation and identification of components and mixtures, all as one kind of boom topic. 
you know, for us, it's booklets that we give the students and that's what I'd put in that booklet. Then I do my, um, from covalent separation, identification of compa components and mixtures roll into my organic chemistry. So covalent into organic chemistry makes a lot of sense to me. And then polymers and society, having the investigation earlier, uh, well before the holidays so that I have time you know, to assess it and get good feedback back to the students. And then I'd do the mole before the students went on those um, mid-June holidays or before exam time. Um, and I'd finish off with that so that that led nicely into water, <laughs> yeah, water and carry. <laughs> Um, so it leads really nicely into water. So water looking at a lot of those ionic salts and a lot of at the organic contaminants that can be within water or that are meant to be in water. So having a little look at um, the water is a unique chemical. And because you're studying water, getting into concentration straight after that and having just done the mole is just a really nice logical little step. It's also one that students tend to struggle a lot with concentration and they struggle a lot with, you know, things like that. So if you go into acid base and if you're looking at um, concentration in acid base, then it just makes sense that you've already done sort of concentration first. So tying your concentration to acid base and then to the analysis of acids and bases, you know, having just done acids and bases and learning about a titration. I know I like to do my practical investigation on titration and I simulate a contaminated um, water stream. And that would be a beautiful spot for me to start to do my practical investigation right there. Um, but analyzing for salts, so determining what types of components are in those um, water mixtures, and then um, having a little look at, you know, tying all that together in terms of a water analysis, in terms of an investigation. So although I've said I did titration, a lot of people do water sampling and they do pH and they look at water quality. If you go to a waterway or an estuary near you, a lot of people do that. Um, and that's a really, really good one. So if you're teaching all of those first, then you're not leaving your practical investigation to the very end and you're giving yourself a little bit more leeway to market and to give really effective um, feedback to your students. Uh, so after that, we do um, redox reactions. And you can also sort of see there that, you know, if you're doing it toward the end, if you sort of know what the rest of your time is like, then you'll know if you can step into a little bit of year 12 redox reactions because it's very, very strongly linked and the same with gas laws. And even if you are going to be the year 12 teacher as well, then you might use that as an opportunity to continue on with the year 11 class going into year 12, depending on how your school is structured. So then these next couple of slides are just a bit more of a breakdown um, of what's in each of the topics, what's new specifically to those topics and what you could be using from what you already have. Um, so in the column, the first column I've got in blue is highlighted things that are new and that you will have to add into um, things that you have. And in green, I have links to sustainability and green chemistry there. And then some other little highlights throughout. Um, so what I've got there is, again, the weeks, the breakdown of the weeks and what you would do in each of the weeks. And the practicals that I would do to get to those 10 hours, I like a practical a week, to be honest, with my students um, or an activity a week or in our double lesson, because we have a double once a week with the students, that they're actively participating in their learning as opposed to me standing up the front and teaching sometimes at them. Let's be honest, we, we tend to do it. Um, so I've got the different activities that you do in there. I've also linked in the assessment column, uh, the formative assessment that I do. We do weekly quizzes with our students and um, instead of writing those myself, which I currently do, I would use the ones from the Oxford OBook Pro and just link to the quiz that I would do from that chapter that week. So it may not work exactly, you know, miss a quiz in a week or something like that. Um, and then I, because they're editable, Alina nodding at me because they're editable. Yes. No, they're not editable. 
their little online quizzes. Excellent, their little online quizzes um, that aren't editable. I'd just say, oh, skip that one this week, do that one or do it for homework, that kind of thing. Um, so you can see that I'm not going to go through because we've already really gone through the order that we do. This is the by the book order. Um, but you could just easily mix and match this to be the something a little different order if that's what you wanted. So, um, and I think to answer Anna's question in the chat there that we'll get copies of these timelines, the um, webinar will go out as well. So, um, so that's the half of unit one. And then the other half is reaction. There we go. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, reactions of ionic compounds. New in there is precipitation reactions. So it's come from um, really late in uh, the unit two at the moment to really early into unit one. So precipitation reactions are in there. Oh, my lights all just turned off. And then um, so doing that kind of thing, um, sorry, I, the lights, they distracted me. And we've put in an assessment that you could do in there possibly um, with comparison and valuation of practical activities. And then the new separation and identification of components and mixtures, which is basically new to unit one, two. Um, but we've, if you've taught year 12, you've taught similar chromatography before. So that's area of study one for unit one and area of study two is actually all fits on one slide, which was fun. Um, lots of practicals. There's a classification identification activity in there as well and a product process or system development um, practical activity in there as well. So also lots of links to sustainability and green chem in that one, but it's, it's all there, very similar to the order that we just went through. The practicals that have the asterisks next to them are ones that I've done before. They're not in the um, Oxford textbook, but you could uh, find them very easily. They're just other ones that I've done previously. So just more ideas for people. The rest are in. Um, and I guess in along the lines of just emphasising those that green chemistry and that circular economy and all that type of thing, at least one of your um, SACs for Year 12 does have to, or I say that, it does say it should include reference to sustainability. So we all know, you know, if you do get an audit, you will get asked where those links are. Um, so just bearing in mind with that one, because I know sometimes it can be, you know, seen as something that's just a little bit on the on the sidelines and maybe not emphasised as much. So it's something that we are very much going to emphasise as we go through. It is quite explicit mm -hmm. in this new study design. So in terms of unit two, again, another breakdown, um, bringing in those formative assessments, if someone's already written them for you, um, and it's really great, you know, coming from people who have been teaching this for quite some time and who are VCAR assessors. And so we're trying to make sure that all of those um, in chapter questions, all of those checkpoint questions and all of those formative quizzes that we have put all through the book and there is an absolute abundance of them, um, that we are bringing them back to make sure that there is purpose to those questions that we have put in there. So those um, those O book quizzes are really, really useful. Um, and then just popping those little summative ones in there as well. Again, down in Redox, there is that possibility if you have a little bit of time, if you've got a week, just explore some galvanic cells, why not? It tends to be the one thing, if you've never taught Year 12 before, that electrochemistry comes up is a guaranteed thing on every exam. Sometimes there are two or three short answer questions on them, and they tend to be answered very poorly. Um, and it tends to be based on the fact that students struggle to identify where half equations are and the direction that those half equations are moving in. And so the more exposure they have to that terminology and those types of questions, the better. So where we can drag things in from year 12, we definitely do. So area of study two, a um, little bit shorter. Love that. Um, because no, I mean, slide little, one of two there. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, a bit longer. Um, but, but even then, like if, if you think about and if you know the previous study design, year 11 is quite massive. So 
if you like if you follow that and you'll notice because we've de-emphasized certain things and we've really spending more time on it just have a little think about that have a little read through year 12 if you haven't already um, and try to find those links to emphasize those things that are really important so again going through um, still solution concentration solubility tables precipitation um, one thing that Kate and I are constantly back and forthing with each other is that there was a question on an exam a few years ago and it kind of had an underlying base level of you were expected to know a precipitation reaction that you should have been taught very early on in year 11 and it wasn't in year 12 and it's an expectation that our students know their solubility table and their precipitation reactions and their valencies for their ions as well. Um, so just making sure that you know you understand those links and why they're so important because sometimes there are questions like that that can trip kids up and it was quite heartbreaking how many different ways did we have to market Kate like three different ways yes just take that into consideration yeah which was quite heartbreaking so again um volume volume stoichiometry acid-based titrations are there sorry um Gases have come out of year 12 and are now in year 11, but again, please don't um, de-emphasise them because students do know, need to know how to do combustion in year 12 and they need to know how to calculate the volume and the energy of various combustion reactions. So that one is there with the ideal gas equation and the molar calculations as well. Um, linking salts through to sustainability again and why those salts are in there. If you are unaware of what's going on with the Murray-Darling, it's been going on for quite some time now. So there are so many articles out there and so many case studies that you can give to your students to get them to practice how they're doing that. It's a really, really good little link. And then, of course, your practical investigation, which although we say 600 words in year 11 is not 600 words. We can be creative there, that's fine. I did see um, interesting samples in Maria James's VCAR um, webinar last week, the week before, whenever she did it. They were actually, the way that they're presented, very interesting. I think that because they're asking for a lot less in the poster, 600 words might be achievable. So there, if you're looking for samples of those posters, she did put some up in her webinar. So. Yay, Maria, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's a legend. We love her. She Maria. is. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, thanks so much, um, Kate and Carrie. I found that really insightful, and I'm sure um, the audience have also found it really useful. Um, moving into part three, we'll just talk a bit about um, the series. So these are the covers for the Chemistry for VCE Units 1 to 4 books. Um, I think they're quite beautiful and I'm really excited to hold them in my hands when they're printed and ready to go. Um, we Back in June, we ran a full product walkthrough um, and that's available online to view as well. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about the product, um, including the print product, as well as all the digital features, um, please scan this QR code to access the recording. You can also find this on the website. Um, In terms of pricing and availability, all this information is in the table below. Um, I just did want to note that the print and digital samples for what units one and two and three and four are now available. So um, if you're interested in getting a hold of that, um, please drop your name in the chat or reach out to one of the sales members. Um, I'll share their contact details in the next slide. But before that, I did want to note that um, for the Student O-Book Pro, um, the digital license has a um, validity duration of two years. So um, if students, um, students in year 12, they can go back and look at any of the content that they've, uh, that they might, might need, that they might need brushing up on in year 12. Um, so that's all accessible to them over the two years. Um, so here's the Victorian secondary sales team. Uh, please feel free to take a photo or either drop your name in the chat and um, they'll reach out to you with some more information. Cool. Uh, with that, I uh, wanted to 
open the floor to any questions. So if um, anything's popped into mind during the uh, presentation, please feel free to drop the questions that you might have into the chat and we'll uh, read them out and get them answered. All right, we've got We've got a question here. Aside from the four mandated SAC types for units three and four, what other internal assessment tasks would you recommend that would be helpful to prepare students for exams? Um, I would definitely say, like, regardless of what the SACs are, and even for year 11 and year 12, I'm still going to be doing short little, um, I guess, exam style tests. Public tests. Will, yeah, topic tests, yep. which won't contribute toward their internal, but are so, so, so essential just to teach them how to get into an assessment and to relax, how to break down a question, how to, you know, tackle that, how to work to timed conditions, um, how to structure out written responses. So wherever we've been able to identify writing structures or hints or tips for you to do that as a teacher, we've popped all of those into the book. Um, yeah, so strongly recommend even even if they're not a part of internal assessment, either in year 11 or year 12, still doing um, test style. Yeah, I guess assessments. Yeah, we still do for our year 12s, even though you're not allowed to use it as a SAC, we do area of study topic tests for, for four of them, just to make sure that they're const consistently and constantly working on those exam skills and they always have a part A, multiple choice, part B, short answer and a part C for us, which is very reflective of either question nine or question 10 on the exam so that we're always making sure that they're they're working towards those exam question skills. So definitely do that and um, practicals. I know it's one of the assessments, but we assess our practicals as well. Yeah, same. And I think whenever I do a practical with mine and they're writing it up in their logbook, I have a bit of a focus. So not every single practical is a write up because that that makes your workload completely unachievable as a teacher. But we have like a little theme. So today, guys, we're going to work on how we structure our variables for this. How do we write them? How do we look at our data? How do we analyze our data? How do we look for our errors and what are the types of errors we have? So we have little themes. And so that way, as they're going through the year, they have nice little, um, I guess, worked examples of how to do each of those components of a prac write up. And to assess those, um, we do really similar thing. To assess those, we use the same rubric we do in the practical, so we're always working towards the rubric. Um, and ours is a developmental practical rubric, so the skills can be worked on all the way up. Perfect, thanks guys. Um, have we got any more questions? Oh, so I've got uh, a question. Cool. Uh, it's, do you have any tips for developing assessment rubrics? Um, don't reinvent the wheel. There's yeah. some great stuff out there. Um, yeah. I would be hunting for things that already exist, uh, other subjects at your school that maybe already have a assessment rubric for say, let's, for example, the poster or practical skills. Um, and I would be using that. I would be looking at the VCAR one and seeing um, what it has in it and what you could take from that, use from that, use it directly. That's what it's there for. Um, and I know our practical rubric, biology is just stolen recently for their poster. Enviro uses it. So we're rolling it out to everyone. It's just generic practical skills and we all do them in the sciences. So don't reinvent the wheel, I would utilize someone else's work that's already been done. <laughs> and I think as well, if you've got an amazing science team, so in my school, all of our sciences use the same rubric other than psychology. So I'm also teaching psychology at the moment and psychology use a modified version of it based on the different components that they require. Um, but really getting together as a science team, if this is at all a possibility in your school and mapping out what skills look like from year seven to year 12. So I have quite a massive skills rubric. It is gigantic. It is too long, um, but it does map the skills all the way from year seven to year 12 and what that looks like. 
and we go through and we look at um, based on student responses, we like put them on the board, de-identified, and we have a little look at um, teachers and students where you would place someone on the rubric and what specifically they need to do to move up it. So having a really good science team who can help you out with that, and if you can have a whole school rubric that goes seven to 12, for all of your core sciences, um, that's just phenomenal because then you know your students are being taught that rubric from year seven. They're gonna get into year 12 and it's not gonna be a massive shock to the system. Thanks for that. Um, have we got anything else from the audience? If you do want some more information on the rubrics, um, our other two co-authors, James and Carolyn, uh, held a webinar last week, Alina, or the week before. Um, and it is up on the Oxford website and they do walk you through some of those assessments in a little bit more detail. But Maria James and her presentation last week was really great as well. So utilise those resources. They're really good resources. Yeah, that one you can get to, I found it the other day, you can get to um, by going to the study design page and it's the, at the bottom implementing the study design and then it's there and the videos there it's very good uh, we do have another question um so rebecca says i haven't used oxford before how user friendly is the online component uh welcome rebecca <laughs> um, in terms of how user friendly it is um I'd say it's pretty pretty good. Um, some you can check out the product walkthrough to get an idea of um, what that looks like, and the print and digital sample so includes a digital the full um, chapter three covalent substances. So you can actually go onto the platform and have a bit of a play around. Um, if you're interested in um, getting access to that, um, we can have our sales team reach out um, with some more information following this webinar. And Rebecca, you probably haven't used Oxford before because this is the first VC chemistry book that we've uh, released. So this is specifically written for this study design. So there's no extra, no chaff, just the perfect amount. <laughs> we hope that's what we wrote it for. But there are also a lot of extra resources that we've put online that have we haven't been able to fit into the textbook. So worked examples and practicals and lots of things that we just we went a little bit too crazy and we mm. didn't want to devalue all the work that had been put into that so there are a lot of additional resources for teachers and students online as well uh, all those extra questions that i wrote that alina ruthlessly edited out just whoo so they're Jeez, all online alina. so it, what it's are you doing? yeah these publishers <laughs> Oh, here we go. Uh, do you have any top tips for someone? Oh my gosh. Uh, do you have any top tips for someone teaching VC Chem for the first time? Any do's and don'ts? Um, do's. I would definitely know what's in the year 12. So if you know what's in the year 12, then you'll know the purpose behind the skills that are being taught um, and you'll understand where those links are, so what to emphasise. I would also strongly recommend, because Kate and I as assessors, I don't think, Kate, there's been one meeting that we've been in in the last couple of years where something has happened that has kind of shocked us, even as teachers, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a short answer structure, whether it's um, a wording of something, whether it's the requirements of something, um, I would definitely know what those specific pieces of terminology and those structures and all of that is going in. I think chemistry is a challenging one just because it is probably one of the subjects within the entire VCAR curriculum that is consequential. So everything in unit one and two is needed for three and four, and that's quite tricky. So I tend to go back to skills a lot as well, formulas, valencies, solubility, um, those key core skills and just making sure that students can apply. I think for me, that's that's one of the biggest things. Kate, what do you reckon? Yeah, for sure. And I'd find a friend that's taught it before yeah. and just ask them a billion things. Go to PD, lots of different, I know they're all online these days, but that's how I started out, just kind of like siding up to people at the STAV conference and being like, how long have you taught for? Hi, I'm Kate, just can I have your stuff? You know, and yeah. being a little bit weird about it, but um, do it. Let's that. hope, 
yeah, let's hope that Stab's in person this year and come hunt us yeah. down if we're there and, yeah. yeah, introduce yourself and ask if you can steal our stuff. Happy. We're really happy to share everything. Right. And Obviously we are because we've written the <clears throat> textbook and we'll share, you know, all our knowledge. So, yeah. And a Make lot of friends. the things that we do, a lot of the tips and the tricks that we have for you as teachers is within that book as well. So we've really tried to break things down and to help you out and to show you where those links are as well. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, come And there's the lesson plans yeah. on Oxford, on, yeah. Yeah, on the teacher part. There are lesson by lesson, you know, plans. So, you know, book list Oxford and get those. <laughs> I adore you. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, have we got anything else? Got a few thank yous coming in. Very welcome. No worries. Yeah. Uh, while everyone's giving their thanks, I also wanted to say thank you for your time and all your efforts to put in to um, giving this webinar today. Um, I found it really helpful, so I'm sure that <laughs> there are others who agree. And uh, as we can see through all the thanks coming in from the chat, they definitely do agree. You're, everyone's welcome. And uh, Lena's going to go teach Year 11 Chemistry next year. <laughs> it's her next vocation. PhD in Pharmaceuticals, it. Publishing, yeah. BCA Chemistry. Yeah. We make it <laughs> Inspired. <happen. laughs> No worries, guys. Thank yeah. you. Have a great evening. Go have a glass of wine, I think. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, thanks, everyone. <laughs>